Hey everybody, Professor Snart checking in uh, as we finish up. Let me find our units here. Uh, finish up unit three, and I'm recording this just as we transition from three to four, so I'm gonna uh, look uh, backwards a little bit at uh, unit three, or at least at our due dates, and then forward to four and uh, a little bit into five, just to give you kind of a heads up here. So due date wise, I'm recording this on Thursday morning, uh, early afternoon, um, February 8th, so we're just finishing up again this Unit 3 due date, and then we have that reply window to do, uh, but you can obviously start getting into Unit 4, right, uh, really anytime after you've finished up that stuff for, for uh, uh, Unit 3. So just a quick, again, recap from Unit 3. Um, one of the things to notice is we're still not really diving into a particular genre of writing per se. We're thinking pretty uh, globally about um, aspects of writing, creativity, uh, motivations for why we write. So a couple things going on here. Um, picking up from the writing prompt exercise uh, that we started in Unit 2. Creating a new page on your uh, portfolio site there. And then looking at uh, analogy, that language of simile, metaphor, comparison. And then, again, a fairly lengthy explanation uh, for um, a relatively straightforward assignment to find uh, this language of analogy, a simile, in something that you're familiar with. Uh, you know, a book that you've read or liked, a short story you remember, even a song maybe, and to try to actually take the simile and put it into our formula here, and then of course explain how it works as a simile. Uh, and again, notice right at the bottom that um, uh, reply component going on here too. Okay, so that moves us then into unit four, which is really our first um, unit that has us focused on a particular genre, in this case, short fiction, which is really leading us to Unit 6, our short story workshop, our first workshop. Again, like I said before, you want to be thinking about a short story now and beginning to develop it so you're not um, having to crank one out so quickly after, say, we finish up 5 and then turning around to 6. So, a couple things going on here. A really quick handout, if you want to call it that, for some major uh, vocab items that we want to think about as we uh, look more specifically at fiction or short fiction here. Most of the terms probably fairly familiar to you, um, but good to have working definitions. And it's less, you know, less matters less that we have definitions for all this, um, but more that you're thinking actively about each of these components as you begin to write your own short story working towards our first workshop. So we know we have major characters, tend to be actors or doers, right? Minors, they tend to be uh, reactors to things. Also thinking about the difference between a protagonist and an antagonist. Um, oftentimes we learn this as like the good guy and the bad guy, um, but really we know from lots of popular movies and pop culture stuff that it doesn't always work that way. Often we have a protagonist or a major main character who's not necessarily 100% likable or even likable at all in certain cases. So the protagonist could be, in some instances, kind of like a bad guy, uh, or woman for that matter, and then the antagonist um, who is working against that protagonist could in fact be uh, someone that we'd label as the good guy in the story. We have setting, and we really want to be conscious of setting, uh, establishing a place for our characters to be and being descriptive about that. Um, but then striking that balance between we can't describe every single thing, so we want to choose elements to describe that um, contribute to or that uh, we can choose one and that really gives us a sense of a whole bunch of items of description that we uh, can choose from. And again, contributing to the overall, uh, not just setting, but atmosphere and theme of the story. Conflict, I'm sure you've heard this whole thing before, right? Man or human versus human, nature, society, culture, man versus himself. So do think about like what is the primary mode of conflict in the story that you write, keeping in mind though that there can be overlap between um, you know, these various things. It's not like we have to have just one and exclude all the other ones. This is the classical uh, narrative pyramid for um, the sort of ideal or theoretical um, short story. And then we know from our experience that um, authors deviate from this theoretical right, idea um, and that's perfectly okay. Where you, or sort of like where that moment of primary conflict comes in your story clearly doesn't have to be symmetrically exactly 
you know, halfway between the uh, beginning and the middle. But you do want to have each of these pieces in place. So we have some scene setting and exposition, this rising action or growing tension, this one climactic moment, and then some sense of falling action, that French denouement, sort of that, the waning away of the story. But you can move that, the point of that pyramid, almost anywhere you like, as long as you still have elements of these other things happening. So it could happen very early, this sort of early moment, right, that we then have to work through for the rest of the story. Or it could happen very late with a really sort of drastic drop off where you're leaving some questions open for the reader about, you know, what are the implications of this major thing that's happened. Keep in mind, too, uh, as we think again about this uh, mapped onto the rules of creative writing, we call it a climax or a conflict, but it doesn't need to be this epic, grandiose kind of a thing. In fact, we sort of want to gravitate away from that and think about uh, making our conflict much more mundane and everyday um, and not relying on hyperbole or shock value or going sort of over the top to make our story interesting. And then of course theme. We don't want to uh, declare this in the story, either in the title or through some moralizing thing that maybe a character would do, but we obviously want to have some uh, core or grounding idea that our uh, that our story builds upon. So we never want to talk about it forthrightly or directly, but it doesn't mean that it's not necessarily there. So just some things to keep in mind as we begin to build uh, our short fiction writing in the class. There's some stories to read here embedded as ebooks, uh, Hands by Sherwood Anderson, and then also The Cask of Amontillado, a famous uh, story by Poe. And one of the things that I'll invite you to do then is to think about like where each of those elements or how each of the elements from the handout that we just looked at kind of work in um, each of these stories. Like if you were to map the pyramid for the narrative you know, shape of each story, what would it actually look like? Who would you label as the protagonist, antagonist, main character, minor character? What's the moment of conflict? And again, where would that happen exactly? Um, and also thinking about how all of those elements, including description of setting and stuff like that, contribute to the overall theme in both of the story, or even themes, because there might be multiple. Um, so again, read these with a really intentional eye to figuring out how they work uh, from that the, the perspective of the craft of the short story. So how do these authors deal with all of the things that are happening in our reference guide here? Okay, so the assignment then for Unit 4 is really a collaborative one across our entire class to build out our vocabulary when it comes to uh, short story um, terminology, and a lot of the terms actually apply across genres, but, uh, and again, it, it's nothing that, you know, we would ever necessarily care to memorize exactly, uh, and some of the terms are pretty, mm, pretty, uh, what's the word, kind of like jargon. Um, we might recognize them when they happen in a short story, even if we don't know the exact term that we would apply to that. So the terminology is really less important than uh, extending our knowledge about what kinds of things can happen in short stories and then thinking about how to use those ideas in the work that we are producing for the class. So we can actually see the slide deck that's set up here and you can click through it. There's nothing there just yet. These are all the terms that we're going to define. But to do it, you're going to want to follow this link here and then sign in to that uh, Google Doc or that slide deck that's built. And then your job is to choose two of the terms from the various slides here and uh, define them and also to try to provide like an example where that makes sense to do so. So I don't mind if you just Google, you know, the terminology and find a reputable source, a dictionary online or something like that. Um, don't just cut and paste right that that definition try to put it into your own words because that exercise helps you to really understand what the term means, not just be able to import some definition that doesn't even make sense to you or to other people. And so of course, as we go, and you can only do terms that haven't been defined yet, we'll end up with this really nice artifact of all of these terms defined with uh, examples that people are finding. Oh, there it looks like someone did unreliable narrator already. Uh, so I'm gonna say it wrong. Roisin, Roisin, darn it, I forget. You even helped with interpret, uh, uh, pronunciation, I remember that. So uh, what you've done here really well and what everyone needs to remember is to make sure you, that you do include your name. That way when I come to grade it, um, I can see who has actually done what. It just makes it a little bit easier to grade. 
Okay, so that's the initial part of the assignment is building two definitions. And then the reply part is gonna happen just in the discussion board. So one of the things that you wanna do is uh, use the discussion board then to create a post that just lists the terms you define. You don't have to redefine them in the post, just list the terms. So that'll be your initial thread. And then the follow-up, the reply piece is going to be each student goes into the slide deck and finds a term or a couple of terms that um, they'd never run into before. Or maybe it's a term they kind of knew, but the uh, example really brings it to life or the way that the person has uh, described it here really makes it an apprehensible, understandable term. So if I was going to do uh, the example here, I would go back into the... Uh, the discussion board and then click that thread, click her thread, and then do a reply saying, I always knew what unreliable narrator kind of was, but your definition really helped because, and then fill in the blank. Or the example really helped me understand it because I could really picture how the definition actually worked. Okay, so there's an, an initial uh, work to do in the slide deck here. that You wanna follow that up with a quick post uh, telling us what terms you defined and then ultimately there's that reply component that we have as well. All right, so a few different things going on, some basic terminology, a couple stories to read, and then an exercise where we really expand our uh, vocabulary that's related to, um, especially to short fiction. So I'm gonna take a quick jump. Actually, I'm gonna skip over five, which I'll return to in a later announcement, and look towards our first uh, workshop here. So keep in mind that we're always gonna be uh, posting um, a link to the discussion board. There's always going to be a discussion board set up. Ah, it's just off the screen at the bottom of my uh, uh, page here, so you'll see it down there. We want to make sure that we build our short story in Google Docs uh, or compose in whatever um, processor, word processor you want and just cut and paste, but make sure you build it uh, and post it as a URL to this document. Again, make sure you share it correctly so that people can comment. We wanna make sure that we have that access. And then of course, the whole uh, premise of the workshop is that once people um, uh, uh, post the URL to their story, and you're gonna be within a group of people, so it's not like you have to do this for everybody in the class, then we'll have access to everyone's document within your group, and you can then um, provide commentary by actually using the comment feature in Google Docs. So the really nice end product for each author is you will have a document with your short story, but also with comments from probably two or three or however many end up in a group, um, readers. And so you have this compilation of commentary that becomes really useful for you uh, when or if you decide to go back and revise. So again, I invite people to pop ahead into the Unit 6 short story workshop, look at the mechanics of how it's gonna work, Find the assignment, which is honestly pretty open-ended. Uh, we're really just looking for the application of some of the rules and ideas that we've looked at. And then, of course, you can find out uh, what group you're in. We also want to be careful about our due dates here. Again, keeping track of what we're doing in the immediate term, but also looking forward to that first posting date for our workshop. Thursday, March 1st, making sure that you're thinking about your story now and not waiting kind of until the last minute and just sort of slapping something together. Okay, so as always, you can be in touch with any questions or concerns, and I'll ch check in with everybody soon.